in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, teachers and students, as we are seeing in this gospel, when the people heard that Jesus was in the region, they immediately spread the word, the word, and they brought to him all the sick people just to touch the garment, his, the edge of his garment, and they were all healed. <clears throat> but this wasn't all. With them also came the Pharisees from Jerusalem. And as always, they did not come to hear the words, the, the words of wisdom and the teaching that would come out of his mouth. But they came to trap him, to accuse him of disobeying the law and not respecting the tradition. So they put the tradition above the law of God. So you see, they, they had this tradition before eating bread. They had this pitcher with two hands that they had to wash their hands before they would eat the bread. So they would take it first with the left and put the hand like this and throw like the water and the water will go down soon. And after with the clean, we'll take the clean head of the other, the, the other side and pour it on the left hand. So, and after that, they will be considered clean. So now, because the apostles of Christ didn't do that, so they are accusing him. So if you're so, so good, and you're teaching all these wise teachings, why your own followers are not keeping the tradition. They are disobeying. For them, that was like a blasphemy. And why in this content he's calling them, the Pharisees, with these words, hypocrites. Because you, he's pretty much opening their eyes. See, you're, you are looking at the letter, but you, don't, you do not see the context of the letters. You're just seeing something like a picture, but you're not going into the depth of the, that picture. So like having the, those very expensive works of art and each one of us will look and will see it in a different way one that is more artistic will see it differently will see the value will see whatever the beauty the one that just will see just a, a paint that's all oh, it looks nice but because you're not artistic you cannot see so the same thing with them they spiritually they, they were blind so and being blind, they were leading astray from God and his commandments, the entire Judaic society of their time. And they are accusing the giver of law, but not keeping the law and the tradition. So how can the one that gave the law abolish the law? That's nonsense. But because they could not see this, they are coming up with their own interpretation. And this is why ultimately they did not recognize him as the son of God and the Messiah. And that's why he was looking at them sorrowful. And that's why he's calling them hypocrites because he's seeing in their faces the ones that a little bit later 
will put him to death, will crucify him. Because he is the one that knows our hearts and what is hiding in our hearts. So, and he wanted to point to them that, and he said it clearly when Peter asked him, look what they are saying and how they are accusing us. He said, not what comes through the mouth. It makes the man unclean, but what comes out from our heart through our mouth. That makes us unclean. Why? Because we are allowing through our thoughts that are coming, and we, if we are accepting them, and we are starting working and analyzing and let them take roots deep in our heart, then they will bring evil fruits, right? Either that is hatred, or lying, or stealing, or any other things. This, is, this comes from the evil thoughts that we are accepting through our ears, through our eyes, into our brain, into our mind, and we are letting them grow. It's like the thorns that are filling into the ground with the good seeds. And if we're not pulling them right away and we're letting them grow, they're going to literally destroy the good crops that we planted. So this is what is happening in our life. When we are accepting those evil thoughts and we're not only accepting, but we are nourishing them. We are enjoying them. We are reflecting. We are pretty much watering them. We are giving, giving them vitamins. And let them. we are helping them to grow within us. And what does that does to us? Blocks the rays of the sun of God, which is the light. And our entire human being becomes darkness. And we are living in, those, in that darkness. And the, in the scientific terms, if there is darkness, the photosynthesis doesn't, doesn't happen, so it doesn't produce the oxygen, and we are dying spiritually. This is what is happening when we are allowing those things to happen in our lives. Right away, we have to block them, to, to throw them away, and to start praying when things like that are happening. If you see that you are bombarded with these evil thoughts, start praying. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, the sinner. Do not let any other thoughts come into your mind and through your mind to, in, into your heart. So, and then will start, will happen the first step towards the spiritual cleansing. Because this is how, first of all, you have to realize that, okay, so this is dirt. And if it comes in me, it, I will become unclean, right? So then, that, that, that would be the, to recognize that. And the second, that would be the first step. step. And the second step when you start reflecting on your life to get to know yourself, to get to, to understand that with these actions, you're, ac you're actually disappoint your God and Creator. And then you're trying to make your Creator proud of you, to make Him happy about you. So, and that the next step would be, after you reflected, would be the confession. The actual cleansing. Because no one can be cleansed spiritually except through the confession. The mystery that was established by Jesus Christ on the first day of his resurrection. When he entered, entered to the, through the locked doors. And after giving the peace, the divine peace to his disciples, he breathed upon them saying... Receive the Holy Spirit to whom you will, re you will retain the sins they will retain and to whom they you will forgive, they will be forgiven. Right? Yeah. So, you see, he pretty much took care 
of everything make it possible for us created this spiritual bath which we are called the holy confession the mystery of the holy confession the mystery of the repentance but you see before you confess first you have to realize right so and you come in repentance and you confess and this is the spiritual cleansing so just uh, just by washing yourself is not going to happen so imagine that you're working somewhere with dirt the entire day so and you just throw water upon your body all the dirt is going to go no it's going to remain so you have to use soap shampoo and maybe other sources to take off all that dirt right especially by when, when if you try to uh, repair the car with the, all those oils it goes away it's in a very difficult right to take all that uh, race away so the same thing with the sin there are different kind of sins bigger and smaller and whatever so and that's why for different kind we have to take the specific action and to have the specific attitude to cleanse ourselves in order to be clean so and that's why the priest is there for us because the, the priest before he becomes a spiritual father uh, he is trained in that he studies the canon law so in order to know the gravity of each act of each sin and how properly to act and prepare us and give us the epithemia which is sort of canon so it's pretty much like going to the supermarket and uh, putting the things in the cart and you got to the to, to, to pay so and you oh I forgot my wallet it's going it's going to give you the the products you, you choose no you have to go to go to bring your wallet and to pay for it so the same thing with the mistakes that we made with our sins we have to ask the priest many sometimes we have to ask him father please give give me a canon give me epithemia so in this way to pay for your mistakes others are coming are specifically searching for those that are those priests that are easy going and not giving canons because they they don't want to do anything they just want to hear the absolution and that's it and they go back to the routine and tomorrow they are feeling again and again so you see it's very important to know what we are doing and why we are doing that way to be prepared spiritually all the times so and this is what jesus wanted the pharisees and the jewish people of his time to understand and through them us because we are hearing the same words that he addressed 2000 years ago and now that we are better or different than them how many times as orthodox christians we are just paying attention just to the tradition always the tradition to do that we are doing that but we are not getting into the es essence of that tradition what that actually mean many times we are doing these things blindly without understanding the purpose of it right so but jesus wants us to understand the purpose and to do it the right the right way even with with the fasting how many people they are just abstaining from from food but they don't really understand the meaning of the fasting that the fasting just abstaining from from certain foods doesn't really do anything just it's like a diet or something but the spiritual fasting when we are fasting with our entire body not only abstaining from food but abstaining like protecting our eyes our ears our mouth to not hear or see or do our with our hands evil things right this is the actual fasting so but you see like we are say, we are saying that we are so advanced in 
and technology and science and in many other things, we reach the stars and we are sp spending billions of dollars to, to go in space and visit planets and whatever else they are doing there and expanding, uh, again, billions in making weapons and yet we are talking about peace. And so you see that actually we do not understand God's word. Because if we, are, we would understand God's words and we will take it literally, we will live differently. And we will, because we are spiritual beings, we will act spiritually. But you see, like, we're acting as hypocrites, as they did back in time. We are acting the same way. We are not any better than anyone. That's why he wants us to understand, not to be blind. Because if a blind will lead other blinds, they all will fail, right? So this, this is the reality, my dear ones. And that's why we have to look and to search the spiritual leaders that at least they have something. They, you see that they are trying hardly to do the right thing and to lead us into the path of salvation. So may God enlighten us and us to life eternal. Amen. God bless you all.